Hi, I'm Dr. Shravni Reddy. I'm the Global Chief Operating Officer and the Executive Director of Board, Ojaska Life, and I'm based out of Hyderabad. Talking about the global trends of integrative medicine, I would say, uh, interestingly, though integrative medicine has roots across the world, but the West has quite well picked up. For example, um, in the United States or the countries of the West, there are a lot of integrative protocols that are being taught in schools today. Physicians and practitioners are allowed to pick them up as modules to incorporate into the ways they are treating their patients. In comparison to that, if we see other countries, probably it is not so. Talking about our own country, India, which is the land of Ayurveda, right? These sciences are always spoken about as complementary medicines, but we've all seen since ages, our people here have used these amazing science led protocols and products from herbs to treat various ailments. Various therapies and modalities have been used to cure a lot of ailments, chronic ailments, some of them. Ayurveda has its roots so strong in India. Uh, likewise, you can speak about Chinese medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine is very well known for a lot of diseases and they practice it very fervently. So I would say globally, it has existed since ages, but the West has seen its value and tried to incorporate it uh, I would rather say more generously, uh, but I think the pace is picking up across the world today because of the kind of burden of diseases we see today, especially chronic diseases and ailments. People suffer with chronic pain, diseases like diabetes, hypertension, cancer, which are not about one incident and one day treatment, but they go on for long. Especially in a time like this, when such chronic diseases are causing huge burden, I think uh, as a community as a mankind, uh, we are all looking towards such concepts where we are trying to bring in solutions from other complementary therapies as well to augment our usual protocols. And I think it's a welcome change and I think it's the best time ever to talk about integrative medicine and I think the world is progressing that way. Now let me talk about some of the latest advancements in integrative care across the globe that's happening. Let me give you a couple of examples to address these, right? One is cancer. We spoke about the global burden and the kind of um, issues that we have, especially in management of pain when it comes to cancer and end-stage uh, cancer pain. A lot of modalities and uh, trials have been done. Interestingly, now uh, medical cannabis is being tested and for once in a collaborative research with the traditional hospitals, which is new at least in India, but I think they have already picked it up in the West. That's one classic example I can talk about, management of pain and how a lot of these integrative approaches are being tried out. Second, we can talk about sleep. Insomnia is a huge, huge burden today. That is the next epidemic. Sleep loss epidemic is what we are talking about. And in addressing this epidemic, again, a different treatment modalities and different approaches are being tried out, like guided imagery, meditation, yoga, a lot of these and their uses in, in helping people with insomnia is being tested and tried out. Now, talking about the challenges in integrative medicine and approaches, right? Let me speak from a couple of perspectives. First, from a provider's perspective, which I am as a doctor, one challenge that I foresee and I've experienced is at a policy level that to bring in integrative concepts to the table, to be able to provide them to a patient who's come to me um, becomes a concern because a lot of these are not standardized protocols. Like I said, policies have not been drafted, at least not in most of the countries and geographies that I am aware of. Uh, a lot of times that becomes a concern even if one is ready to accommodate these complementary therapies. And if the patient is willing, and if there is evidence to believe that these therapies can be tried, I still have a policy concern. I still have a structural concern. I still have a problem with the system. I think that's one of the challenges I see uh, as a provider, as a doctor myself. The other perspective is from the patient's perspective, the user's perspective, right? If one needs to try out some of these, one is because it's a newer concept and a niche concept. Uh, lack of awareness, lack of understanding, I think creates uh, a problem in building the trust. I think that is one area. Second, I think the biggest problem or challenge from a user's perspective is the affordability. One of the biggest challenges, I think, uh, across the times with integrative medicine and any newer concepts or niche concepts like these is when you don't have validated, substantiated, research data that is published. I think research is a global concern across many industries, but when it is a newer concept, I think it's all the more evident. So one of the better ways or one of the right ways to address 
uh, the gaps or challenges in the area of integrative medicine is to be able to support that research. And incidentally and interestingly, this research cannot happen as a siloed research because it has to happen as a collaborative research across different disciplines. I think if the governments and the institutions can bring that to a possibility to run that research authentically, collaboratively, I think co-productive research is also what it can be called. I think there is nothing to stop it because the moment you have data speaking about the outcomes and evidence, um, then the science is there to fare on its own. I've dabbled across different domains in the healthcare industry, starting from pharmaceuticals to edtech, healthcare service delivery, health technology, home healthcare. Wellness has always fascinated me. Newer concepts of medicine with innovative research have always fascinated me. This has a lot to do with my own journey, with some of the ailments that I would have battled or my family would have battled. Cancer, mental health and pain are extremely special and personal to me. So when there came a time to think about what more can be done in these areas and what newer or innovative approaches can be brought into one of these areas to find some solutioning, if not all. Um, Ojeska seemed inevitable to me. Uh, a health and wellness uh, initiative that can bring integrative concepts to the table and to be able to help patients choose their choice of therapies sounded interesting to me and useful to me. And like I said, it's very personal and something that has come out of my own journey. So I'm very, very uh, passionate about the journey that we are undertaking with Ojeska. Ojeska is a health and wellness brand that we are trying to bring into the market based on the concepts of integrative medicine that is backed by very strong research. That is the collaborative research between different sciences. We are a both product and service company. Our theme and focus areas are cancer, pain management, lifestyle diseases, and mental health.